Resonance of Fate is a game that's always intrigued me, and I have tried playing this game multiple times. And like most of my relationships, she has zoned me so hard I've tunneled through the earth and burst out the other side. And yes, China is pretty cool this time of the year. But to let you in on a little secret, I kept getting this game mixed up with From Software's Enchanted Arms. I know, me stupid. And at that time, I wasn't really interested in JRPGs after absolutely going for a tear in the PS2 era on binging pretty much every game I could find. So when Resonance of Fate finally came out, I was pretty burned out on JRPGs. With that said, I would constantly see other gamers talking about Resonance like it was the second coming of Yu Yevon. And it quickly grew this cult following that really intrigued me. And this came to a boiling point for me a few months ago when a 4K re-release was coming to the PlayStation 4 and the PC. And I have to admit, I was quite excited to see this game get a new lease on life. So without further ado, let's pick apart Resonance of Fate and see what makes it so special. Resonance was made by Triace of Star Ocean fame and published by Sega in 2010. It started life on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 and got a pretty good response from critics and gamers alike. But the problem here is that it was sandwiched between massive games like Mass Effect 2, Bioshock 2, and a month after the game came out, Final Fantasy XIII was unleashed onto the world. I know what game I'd rather play. I'd rather play Resonance of Fate, at least this game has some characters with some fucking balls. But I digress. Anyway, even in the face of all that, Resonance of Fate did strike a chord with gamers at the time, and it was considered a cult classic JRPG. Resonance of Fate, or End of Eternity if you're Japanese and or cool, was an experimental game built to break out of the standard gameplay the genre is famous for, such as turn-based combat. The idea Triace had was to build a more cinematic and stylish game influenced by western action films like The Matrix. With a steampunk setting and the use of guns over magic, I'll tell you what, this game is really ticking all my boxes. Just look at the movie at the start of the game when you boot it up, I have no idea what the fuck is going on, but I love it. So let's check out our main protagonists. Zephyr is your typical anime edgelord who is one heartbreak away before he joins a Treyu on tour. Leanne, who at first is quite bland, but quickly became one of my favourite characters. Without spoiling the plot, she is very important to the story. Sort of. I don't know. Ah, oh, this story makes no sense and it's making my stupid little brain hurt. Ah, let's move on. And Vacheron, who is Nolan North playing Nolan North for the people who love Nolan North. So if you really love Nathan Drake, said by no one ever, then you will love this character because he is voiced by the immortal Nolan North. Actually, his sarcastic delivery really brings some added charm to the cast. Which is funny because in most games I want to jump through the monitor and choke the smug prick. Our noble trio are guns for hire, who will do any mission for the right price, and the first few hours is mostly doing random but very entertaining jobs for quite eccentric characters. Oh, and in this world, the people are governed by a red-eyed mechanical clock, uh, thing that grants everyone internal life, I think. Well, what the hell, it looks cool. But before we go down that rabbit hole, I want to throw out some opinions about why this game was so quickly overlooked. Number 1. The Graphics You see, Resonance of Fate came out at a splendid time in gaming history, and even with the steampunk setting, the game looks drab as fuck. With an overuse of bloom because everyone loves that graphics setting, and the triad of vivid colours of brown, grey and red, which make this game look so depressing. Why, you have this wonderful sort of setup with a steampunk vibe, but just the colours just mute everything. I don't know why they do this. And even with the 4K overhaul, it hasn't really cleaned this game up that much. Yes, the textures are leaps and bounds better than the PS3 and the 360, and you can definitely see that when you play this in 4K. And yes, you could argue that the muted look of Resonance does give this game an otherworldly feel, but I'm kinda glad that this shit doesn't really happen anymore. And yeah, it just felt like between 2006 and 2013 that everyone forgot what colours actually looked like and everything had to be grey to be realistic. Well, I'll tell you what, grey isn't realistic, so fucking stop doing it. The second reason why I think this game is obscure is because of the title and cover art. 
Yes, the box art in the UK version is kind of meh. And the title is very pretentious. And it's one of those examples where the original title, End of Eternity, would probably would have been better for the Western release, because it A, sounds cool, and B, makes sense. And the third and probably most damaging issue, the game is terrible at explaining itself. Yes, there are tutorials, and there's a shitload of them, but the translation is terrible. Just fucking awful. Even with a second crack of the whip, the remaster has the same issues. So if you want to get into this game, ignore the tutorials and look up online for a guide. Trust me, it'll make a lot more sense. And when you finally get into the gameplay, it's really fun. At first it may seem overly complicated, but the actual battle system is really simple. And after you work out what is going on, the flippy dippy combat really tickles my pickle and it was quite fun throughout. And the only thing you really need to know is how the game manages damage. In a standard RPG, you just swing a weapon at an enemy and numbers fall out. While in End of Eternity, they take a quirky spin on that whole idea, with a system called Scratch Damage. So in a nutshell, you need at least one member of your team with an SMG that causes scratch damage, and another armed with a pistol. The machine gunner deposits his or her bullets into the target, making the health bar turn blue, and then the gunslinger will convert that into sweet, sweet death. You can also use grenades that can be thrown to cause elemental based damage or status effects. So yeah, it's the magic system in disguise. What makes Residence of Fate's battle so engrossing is the over the top nature of everything you do. Even throwing a grenade would make David Beckham blush. I will warn you however that this game is a very stiff challenge, and it will test you beyond your limits. Okay, there is a way to outlevel the content very quickly, but even with this advantage, you'll get caught off guard at times. Speaking of being caught off guard, even with the drab colour palette and the super serious tone, this game gets super wacky. <laughs> it's mine! <laughs> Another quirky spin on a genre staple is the world map. Instead of the usual overworld where you travel from place to place, Resonance uses a hex-based map for its overworld. But before you ask, no this isn't a 4x strategy game. Thanks civilized fuck. Because those types of games make my brain shut down quicker than saying moment to moment gameplay, or some other pretentious game critic bullshit. But back on subject, the game does have an odd mechanic where it comes to unlocking these places around the world by using what they call power hexes. And these items range from the standard white ones that carve a path through the world, and the coloured hexes are used to open new areas. In a weird way, it's kind of hard to explain it. Imagine a puzzle game like Tetris crossed with an RPG, and the gameplay is kind of similar. But the only way to get a decent amount of these hexes is to grind, as they are randomly dropped at the end of a fight. But as the combat is so fun, I didn't mind grinding an extra few hours just to get all the hexes I need to get through the game. If there was one critique I could put on this game, the latter half was really starting to test my patience. And this boiled over in a mission where you have to throw Christmas presents at kids. Now, a quest like this in an RPG is commonplace, and it was kind of goofy. The problem is, this is right before the end of the game and it added nothing to the overall story, just some extra padding for an hour. You see, Resonance of Fate is the reverse trope of a JRPG that, quote, gets better after X amount of hours. You know, that stupid thing that fanboys say when a game that comes out that they absolutely love is boring as fuck. <coughs> Final Fantasy XIII. <coughs> but with Resonance, from minute one, the game is good. Damn good. Even with the wonky tutorials on the combat, I was having a blast. And the lovable main characters were fun to be around and I laughed out loud at some of their shenanigans. But with the constant disjointed way the story is told, it started to become obvious to me that something was wrong. You see the story is really good at giving you a glimpse into a really cool world and it looks really interesting, but it never goes deeper than that. And most cutscenes are a bunch of random characters talking about God, miracles, and other existential topics. It's very Deus Ex. And if you don't know me, I fucking love some Deus Ex. 
And this is very frustrating because the characters you play throughout the game barely acknowledge this. And when they do, it makes no sense. And it has really cool ideas and it would be awesome. But what we're left with is just a load of pretentious Kojima level bullshit. Which really sucks because there's great ideas for a story here, but the message is so muddled by the end, it just leaves you very unsatisfied. Even with all that said, I really like Resonance of Fate. It's a fine example of pushing the envelope, with some really interesting ideas on story, combat and characters. Yes, it might have been confusing and padded in some places, but you can tell there was a passionate team behind this, and it shines throughout. Do I recommend this game? Yes. While playing, it's best to keep in mind that this is an experiment in JRPGs. So even with some of its quirks, I like it because it tried to do something very different, and yeah, it may have crashed and burned in the story department, but I do not regret spending time in this world. And now with the renewed interest of the reboot, I am hoping we'll finally get a fleshed out sequel with a great story and even more fun combat. Or will we wait to the end of eternity to get a sequel? Yeah, I know. So yeah, go pick this up and give it a try. If you don't beat it, I understand, but it's worth a shot. Hey, how's it going? If you enjoyed this video, feel free to join the experiment by subscribing. If you want to be extra awesome, follow me on Twitter and check out my Twitch channel and watch me capture footage for the videos I make on this YouTube channel. Also, The Game Asylum is a year old and I have to thank you all for watching so far. To all the new test subjects and the people who have stuck by me over the years, I thank you. If it wasn't for you, I'd probably be sucking dick for beer money, or doing something productive like sucking dick for science. Man, this outro got weird quick. Anyway, click on the links on the screen if you want to watch more. And thank you, thank you, thank you once again for watching my content, and I'll be bringing more to you very shortly.